Let's see the next story. Don't forget to smash the like button, guys. If you haven't already, if you're watching the playback, go ahead and smash the like button. Story number two by Zodiac or the Zodiac. After returning from a night to celebrate the arrival of the new year, my husband and I returned to our apartment complex to turn in for the night. We both had a couple of drinks, but neither of us were intoxicated. As much as we enjoy partying with friends, when it comes down to it, we are really just homebodies. We lived in the corner penthouse suite of our complex. Although this was never confirmed, it was suspected the owners wanted to convert this apartment complex into condos. The rent certainly was not cheap and access was limited to this floor. Upon entering the building, there is a walk-up, two secure doors, and every now and then, there would be a doorman to greet you as you entered or exited. There were also multiple security cameras placed throughout and around the building. It was an especially cold evening, and when we returned, there was no doorman present. It was late, at least 2 a.m. The foyer was empty, and one of the lights flickered softly. My husband and I entered the elevator and pressed the button to the top floor. The elevator ride was smooth, and as we ascended, I could feel myself becoming more relaxed, excited to finally be home and able to rest. My feet were killing me from wearing heels all night in the bitter cold. The bell chimed, signaling we had reached our floor. The door slid open, and we turned the corner to the left. Like I said, our suite was the corner suite at the end of the hall. However, something caught our eye. A woman, or what at least looked like a woman, was meandering through the hallway. Her hair was dark and scattered. It looked to be matted and covered her face. She wore a black lace dress that was torn and looked to be in bad shape. Thinking back, I don't even think she had any footwear on. We assumed she was intoxicated and was having difficulty finding her suite. Although on closer inspection, she didn't look familiar. We knew all of our neighbors, as like I said, access was limited on this floor. I looked at my husband, who stood still as well. Uh -oh. I could see he was contemplating the same thoughts. I asked him, should we ask if she needs help? He looked at me and said, just wait. Maybe she's just drunk and having a hard time finding her suite. Maybe she's drunk. The woman just continued to slowly slide herself along the walls of the hallway, stopping at each door and peering through the exterior peepholes. Admittedly, this was creepy, but it just added to the theory that she was a drunk woman looking for her friends. She was humming, or what I believe was humming. The sound was something between a growl and a hum. We stood there in utter disbelief. Is, and awe. is that a zombie? However, there was a veil of tension and uneasiness that lingered. The strange woman stumbled through the hallway, hunched over until she pulled herself up to peer through the peephole. She eventually got to a suite of an elderly lady whom I have a strong connection with. We'll just call her Tilly. Tilly was the sort of woman whose family had neglected her and rarely visited. No. She would bring my husband and I baked goods from time to time. Well, Grandma, I would bring her leftovers Grandma and baked assist goods. her with groceries and medication frequently. Tilly's smoke alarm would constantly go off. I would have to rush over and pull out the smoldering toast from her toaster and fan her smoke alarm until it stopped beeping. At times a nuisance, but it would always turn into tea time. Nevertheless, <laughs> I cared about Tilly. So when I saw this strange woman peer into her peephole, I reacted. I blurted out, excuse me, are you all right? I could feel myself lose confidence as I asked. Wow. The strange woman seemed to shudder for a moment and hunched over to the floor. She looked like she was about to puke or was frightened by my voice. My husband and I stepped closer, but the woman then let out a series of soft and menacing laughs just barely audible. <laughs> hey, yo, what the? I have to admit, in this moment, I was thoroughly creeped out and hey, reached man. for my cell phone. It was uncomfortable okay. because we couldn't get to our suite without having to walk right past this deranged woman. Oh, man. My husband said, hey, did you hear us? Do you need help? Her laugh began to grow into what was a steady <laughs> cackle. The strange woman then stood up. Hey. As she stood up. Her cackle became a mixture between a cackle and a boisterous growl. What? Then stumbled forward and continued walking down the hall. There was a staircase just outside of our suite. I assumed she was making her way to the stairs, just too embarrassed to walk past us to the elevator. Maybe she was just a drunk woman, and this was nothing more than an uncomfortable standoff with a sad and intoxicated woman. Okay. I mean, if she was really that drunk, the stairs probably weren't a good idea. Now she tumbled We're down the, the stairs, seventh sure. floor. Nevertheless, I just didn't feel like it was worth the risk to engage with this woman. I just wanted to enter my suite and dive into bed. It was late, and my feet still hurt. As we took a few steps forward, the woman stopped. 
Almost with laser precision, she stood up completely straight, looked right at our door, and then began to pound on our door, screaming bloody murder. I could feel myself becoming swallowed with fear. I reached for my cell phone and began to dial 911. Bro, you're the too late. kept pounding on our door and screaming. To be honest, I'm late. surprised none of our neighbors came out to see what was happening. Part of me thinks they were too afraid themselves and were probably peering out of their peepholes. They mind their business. Afraid of what our neighbors would think. My husband said, hey, what are you doing? Stop that. And just like that, the strange woman stopped, fell to the ground, and began crawling quickly towards us. What? She looked up for a brief second. All I could see were her dark eyes. Her mouth seemed to be stained black and she was growling again. Oh. But this time, it was as if there was something in her throat that she was choking on. Frozen with fear, my husband and I just watched until she flashed us a menacing hiss, the kind oh, you would no. hear in a movie, but never imagine in real life. She got a demon. Terrified, I whipped off my shoes, and my husband and I ran towards the staircase on the other side of the building. We didn't want to risk waiting for the elevator and have her catching up. I know, for real. We went down two flights of stairs and stopped to listen if she was making her way down the stairs. But it was almost impossible to hear as my heart was pounding so hard. I thought to myself, what the hell was going on? Oh my goodness, bro. We waited there for 10 minutes or so until eventually we had the courage to head up the stairs and back to our suite. The woman was gone, and so we entered our suite. What? I was just relieved to finally be safe in my home. My husband sent a text to our landlord, and he replied that we would hear from him in the morning. I was so unbelievably exhausted, but found it incredibly difficult to sleep. The sound of that woman's growling and cackling rang in my ears. I hardly slept. The next day, when my husband went to speak to the landlord, he asked him to check the security cameras, although nothing turned up. The landlord said the cameras glitched due to the frigid temperatures last night. Oh my goodness. To this day, I still don't know what to serious? think. That woman most certainly had problems. The question is, was she dangerous? We moved about a year later, but every New Year's Eve, I still think about that night. All right, that story was... um. The description of it was was definitely creepy. Like what the lady was hunched over, was crawling toward them, was cackling, growling. Mouth area was black, looking like she was choking on stuff. That's that's typical horror movie activity right there. That's what that is. That is disturbing. Like in that situation, man, I'm getting up out of there. If the if the person was doing the growling stuff and acting strange. Like that, I am getting out of the way. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. But um, let, let me know what you guys would do in that situation. Like, would you stay and call the police and just stand your ground? Or would you get out of there, call the police? Or would you just think about getting out of there? Because I would just try to get out of there. That's what I'm going to do. Um, so drop it down in the comments and in the chat if you have any idea what you would do 